this? Oh, you've asked for this project. I think I'm ready to go and actually no. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, there it is. Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. It's 12 p.m. here in East Tennessee in beautiful Smoky Mountains. That means that it's crafting time with Elisa and with you because you guys are the best part of this equation. I truly enjoyed having these crafting sessions with you guys. Last week we had some fun, we chit chatted in a comment section, we made beautiful things with what we have on hand. Like seriously, we made greeting cards using old gift bags, we made socks out of our fabric remnants. Like, who would have thought that you can actually sew socks? Like it's mind-blowing. So today is gonna be no exception. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna use what we have. We're gonna make beautiful things. We're gonna channel that positive energy through our creativity. And you're gonna be extra happy, I know you will, because oh, you've asked for this project for such a long time. And we're gonna be making zipper pouches. There are three ways how to make them, and I will do a very detailed tutorial later, maybe in a few weeks, but today I'm gonna show you my preferred way of making them, and you will need your fabric remnants. Any size will do, but you need a nice area to work with, and you will need a zipper or zippers, depending how many you wanna make, and then of course your regular stuff, your pin needles, your fabric scissors, your sewing machine. I am not sure why surgery is here. Sewing machine will do just fine. You don't have to have surgery for this project, and that's it, really, and a cup of tea, because you cannot have a good creative process without a good cup of tea. My preferred uh, drink of choice is Earl Grey, but you guys can make yourself a cup of whatever keeps you going, whatever is your juice of positivity, and let's get started. So let me give you a few tips and tricks to work through this process so that way your zipper pouch really turns out fantastic and first of all we're working without a pattern you don't have to have a pattern for this literally we're just gonna be making a rectangular zipper pouch and that's all you need to know as a guideline now another thing is when I work with my fabric scraps a lot of times actually 99% of the times I will lay them out and I will kind of sort them out by size so that way I know what I'm working with like if I'm making a little dress for Artemis I need to know like how big of fabric scraps do I have so I can know if I can combine them well in this case we're actually gonna be starting with our zipper because the length of your zipper is gonna tell you how big of a pouch you will be actually able to make and of course you can always shorten it this one is not a long zipper at all and first of all you don't want this metal piece to be chewed up by your sewing machine because um, that is a danger of breaking your needle and how do I know that well prime example over here and then of course this part over here you also don't want this to show you want it to be concealed by your zipper pouch so we just need to make sure that the size of your zipper pouch is somewhere between this piece and this piece and it just so happens that I have this made for another project that I changed my mind I don't really do that too often, but I changed my mind. But this piece is already fused with interfacing um, and you don't have to have interfacing for this project. It's not necessary, but it will help make your zipper pouch a little sturdier than usual. So you can use it if you have it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Seriously, nothing to be upset about. Just use what you have. Okay, so the size of my zipper pouch, not the final size, but the size of the material that I'm cutting is six and a half inches by nine and a half inches. And what you will need to do is once you have your outer uh, fabric cut, then you need to uh, cut exactly the same size for the lining on the inside. And you don't have to have a lining fabric, you can just use any other fabric that you have. So I have my two pieces cut, my other two pieces cut. I think I'm ready to go and actually no. <laughs> this just came to my mind, you need a pull tab. The pull tab is this little piece over here and it just helps you to have something to hold on to when you're closing or opening your zipper pouch and that should be three and a half inches by two and a half inches and we will fold it and I'll show you how to do that in a second but that's what you need to cut out of your fabric as well. So let's do that real quick. And that pen is actually a heat erasable pen so once we are ready to press our final project you won't be able to see any of those markings that I made so uh, this is a very useful tool uh, to use when you're sewing. So what you're going to do first we're going to actually assemble the uh, pull tab. What you're going to do is you're going to fold it right sides together 
you're gonna stitch on the edge, then we're gonna turn it inside out and do another top stitch, so that way we're gonna have a really nice pull tab to work with, so let's get that done. And you know guys, while we are assembling this pull tab for our zipper patch, I want to tell you that this actually makes a beautiful Christmas gift. And I know that somebody in the comment section did say that, what a great video, but uh, you lose me at Christmas, which I totally understand. That's, you know, it's summer, well, almost summertime right now, springtime, but too bad because that's what I'm making mine for, for Christmas presents. But this can be also a great project to sell as well. If any of you have thought of make, making something to sell, maybe at a farmer's market or somewhere else, this could be a great project to kind of get you started in that, you know, sewing lady reputation. All right, the pool tab is ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a sandwich. So we have our zipper, where's my zipper? did that happen? Oh, there it is. Okay, so you're gonna take your zipper, you are going to lay it down with the teeth and the front, the face of the zipper, facing down. Then you're gonna take your lining fabric and you are going to uh, put it down with the pretty face down as well. So pretty much right sides together, uh, zipper teeth down, like this, okay? So here's your zipper, here's your lining, here's your main fabric, and it has all been sandwiched. And we're gonna make a straight stitch from one side to another. You might need to use your zipper foot for it, but you don't have to. You can actually use your regular foot for that. You might just need to kind of maneuver around it a little bit. All right, so with that being done, what you're gonna do next, ta-da! You're gonna open it up, and then you're gonna fold it like this, and we're going to press this part, so that way it's really nice and flat and looks crisp, and we're going to top stitch right over here. It gives you that extra stability, and in case if you're using an interfacing, especially if you're using a more like a heavy, heavyweight interfacing, it just gives you a really nice flat finish, and it always looks very nice and crisp too, so, Let's get that done and we're going to repeat exactly the same steps on the other side of the zipper pouch as well. We're gonna lay this down, we're gonna take our top fabric, put it on top, and then I'm just gonna let you watch my hands for a second. And while we're doing this, I want to say huge thank you to everybody who uh, let me know where they're watching from. The map is in progress. I will definitely share it with you tomorrow in our next video because that will give us a little bit more an opportunity to talk because this one is more of a tutorial. So I just definitely wanted to make sure that I give you all the parts of this so that way you can make your own zipper pouch without any questions. Um, but yes, thank you so, so much. And it was such a great feeling to know that we're alone in this together and that this kind of technology gives that that fantastic opportunity to be connected, to stay connected, um, to um, have a conversation and continue the conversation no matter what is going on in the world at this very moment. So that definitely gives, you know, a certain sense of comfort, I would say, and a certain sense of positivity, which is very much needed right now. It's done, well, not the whole project, you know, just the both sides, but we're getting super close. Now what we're gonna do is, we need to open this up like this. Let me kind of make it visual for you guys. So you're gonna open up your zipper. You're not gonna open it up all the way through, just, you know, just kind of like a little bit past the middle. Now we are going to do it like this, bam, like an open book that you are kind of shaking, looking for money over there, you know, hidden treasures. Anyway, um, we have opened it up like this. Now we have to not to forget about our pull tab. Happened to me many, many times, unfortunately. Uh, we're gonna put it together and we are going to insert it. Uh, let me test it from which side do we wanna insert it from this one. So we're gonna insert it on your left hand side, kinda close to the top, you know, not at the very top, but close to the top. So that way you can hold on to it while you're opening your uh, zipper pouch and you don't have to get frustrated um, with the whole thing. So now that you have it open like this, we want to make sure that we pin 
all the way from here till here till here till here now when we get to the bottom of the lining we want to make sure that we leave an opening in the middle so that way we can turn it inside out now here's another tip i will sew the bottom as my zipper pouch is going to be ready to be done um, and i just find it to be easier that way for me i'm not sure how it is for you but i just sew from this corner all the way around till this corner and I leave this whole side open and then once I turn it inside out and do my last things when I do a straight stitch from here to here it is nice it is neat and it doesn't have that ugly crinkling right in the middle of the bottom but that's my my personal preference you guys do the way it is best for you so let's get that done now while I'm doing this, I want to share with you that I made a whole bunch of these this past Christmas season as gifts for my team members, for my family members, for a lot of friends as well, and they make a beautiful gift for everybody. But the good question that I have for you guys is how do you feel about giving handmade gifts? Because I know um, the quality of handmade gifts can vary very much so, and there are a few types of people out there, and some of them really don't like receiving handmade gifts because they feel that they have been tricked and um, that this gift has really no value to them which I think is quite the opposite you know if I spend the time making this gift for you I do this extra sentimental extra special um, you know just for you but then again I do understand that sometimes handmade gifts just don't live up to the quality of bought gift but anyway it's just interesting to know what people think about handmade gifts and uh, it's been a tradition in my family for a very 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 long time so I feel just fine about it but I know that some other people are like oh well I can't give a handmade gift because um, that's not what people expect uh, which I definitely think is a um, is a very um, I don't want to say wrong mindset it's just I think that there's no better thing than a handmade gift but you guys let me know what you think about it in the comments below and the funny thing is I saw a post somewhere this past holiday season that Target had gift bags that said, don't worry, it's not handmade, which kind of, you know, puts a bullet into my heart uh, and again serves as a reminder that some people just really don't care for handmade gifts. But anyway, our zipper pouch is almost done. You will stitch through the zipper teeth and that's totally fine. If you feel that your needle might break or it's a very, very thin needle, you want to make sure that maybe you do just a handheld motion of your sewing machine instead of doing it on the foot pedal. So that way you're just really in control of what you're doing. And on the other side, that is the reason why we wanted to make sure that that metal piece isn't in the way of your needle because that would definitely break it or bend it. Uh, but yes, you will be sewing through the zipper teeth and the zipper teeth should be looking up. Um, so let me show you that a little bit up close. So I did my stitch around and you know what? I did use a serger. I'm sorry guys, I tricked you. But you don't have to use a serger. You can just use a zigzag stitch just like you would do on your garments just to make sure that it does not unravel and it looks really nice and neat on the inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it inside out and with interfacing, it might be a little bit um, of a, I don't wanna say a struggle, but you know, the interfacing definitely is a little tough. So you will need to add some pressure on it. All right, so this is how your zipper pouch is looking when we turn it inside out. It's pretty much done, it's super cute. The last thing is the lining. So the lining, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it out like this, then you're gonna fold it in. And that's the reason why I don't sew it up to the middle and leave the opening and blah, 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 because it's just so much easier and neater if I just fold it in. You can press it if you want to press it. You can put your pin needles in if you need to put the pin needles in. And I usually do uh, two straight stitches right across the whole thing just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And that's it. You're pretty much done. I'm gonna finish up my uh, threads here in a second, but I just wanted to show you the final 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 that's it you have a beautiful zipper pouch bam look at that how 
cute is this? I just still need to press it. But then you can um, give it to so many different people for so many different uses. And guys, the project that we have for tomorrow is going to be fantastic. I am just so excited about it. So I will see you here tomorrow at 12 in the afternoon Eastern time for another Crafternoon with Elisa. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you wherever you're watching from. Thank you so, so much. Have a positive Monday and see you tomorrow. Bye.